So Blizzard just posted the actual BlizzCon preparation, which obviously signals something Storm Elemental related with runes. Furthermore, we got 10 things more about the next expansion. Data mined dwarves, void models, materials, a new continent. Let's get straight into the evidence for the next expansion. We've all been speculating, having our own predictions, but in this video, I don't want to give you guys predictions. I want to compile every single next expansion bit of evidence that we had gotten from void presence to the new continent that should be confirmed to all the new items, as well as the actual leaks. And I want you to make your own predictions based on that. The announcement will be happening in a week, so there is still time to make final predictions on what 11.0 is about so let's cut the fat let's cut the speculations let's dig into the meat of the next expansion as you guys are gamers, you're almost certainly also into gadgets, and that is exactly why I'm excited to talk about this video sponsor, Gadget Discovery Club. They can send me two of these boxes, and honestly, they were quite a bit better than I could expect. It. First of all, I got in one of them this awesome blender, which is super easy to use, wireless, super easy to clean up as well. Additionally, they have also sent me this wireless Bluetooth speaker, which is tiny, but also has amazing sound at the same time. Now, you may be wondering, like, what exactly is this club? Now, you can get quarterly themed boxes with a bunch of themes with up to four gadgets inside. Best of all, it's not just cheap stuff, it's always going to be worth at least $125, and there's almost always going to be something that you will find very useful. You can play annually, you can play quarterly, but best of all, this can be a perfect gift, especially now for November, the Black Friday, and all the holidays, as you can gift people this amazing gadget discovery box. So it's never been a better time to join the Gadget Discovery Club. Click my link in the description below and use code DORONS movies and you will get $20 off your order. So check out my link in the description below. So realistically, this league season has actually been one of the weakest so far. With Dragonflight, not only did we data mine the team like half a year before the announcement, but weeks before we had even data mined the name Dragonflight itself. However, with 11.0, it is a little bit different. We got a ton of hints, but only two, three are actually very strongly hinting at what it is, like their actual evidence, and the remaining 30 are all up for speculations, which leads all of us to naturally just make our own predictions. However, However, now I'd like to put my own speculations up to an absolute minimum and I want to give you guys every single hint we currently have so that you can make your own predictions and then so you can kind of cut through the fat and just get the 100% hard data. So to start off, 11.0 Kedoi Condition has been leaked in the PTR build of 10.1.7 along with the trading post currency rewards, which is of course confirming that we will get a new expansion this year's BlizzCon, this was trade news to anyone. This also subsequently confirmed that 10.2 is going to be the final major patch of Dragonflight and the further updates all but 100% confirmed that we won't be getting 10.3 or really another major addition to this current expansion. A few months before that we got legit most visual hint that was the appearance of Troll on the BlizzCon art which is all but a 100% confirmation that he will be a major character in the next expansion. The logic for that is prior to BFA announcement we had Jane on the BlizzCon art, prior to Shadowlands announcement we had Sylvanas on the BlizzCon art, naturally you can connect the dots and we can use the same logic to predict that Troll is going to be one of the most relevant characters. Seeing that he is a world shaman, that he saved the world from the Cataclysm in the past, and now we are getting Cataclysm 2.0 with Amirdra seal and the new patch, that made everyone connect this as an elemental based expansion, which naturally makes sense. However, then we got all these new continent hints, some you probably already know, but we got new ones that are only a week old at this point as well. I really want to spare the speculations, you can probably already heard most of it, so I'm going to summarize it as much as possible. These hints have been littered in the game since the start of Dragonflight. First we got the hint of that pirate Night Squall selling to a new continent West, being the only person to return, now he's starting a new expedition, yada yada. This of course prompted everyone to believe the new pirate expansion, but then the CEO of Blizzard came out said no pirates will be happening. Furthermore, Night Squall may actually be just a complete dead end, as the guy that introduced him is no longer actually working at Blizzard, however he was probably never actually meant to be a major character, just like a small hint to tease the next expansion, like someone that managed to visit the new continent and to return. Around the same time, Brianna Crosshold got affiliated documents in Deathwing's laboratory, they talked about the ordering of Azeroth by the Titans, how all of that has been a lie, how the Titans never actually managed to get rid of the old gods' influence as they claim, and how they had apparently hid something beyond the waves, which was yet another hint at a new continent. 
Then, only a week or two back, we got essentially just a confirmation that the new continent exists, which is the most legit evidence of this entire league season. It is called the Tragedy of Renetria, and to summarize it as quickly as possible, it talks about a green dragon that explored all there is to Azeroth, got bored, got really curious to go west of Kalimdor to the apparently forbidden area. She talks with Tyr, and this heavily foreshadows that he knows what is hiding there, he wants to keep it a secret, and he doesn't want anyone to go there. Apparently, a terrible storm is around this continent, island, or landmass that no one is able to go through. Officially, Erinetria dies, and we are warned to never go beyond the storming sea, but then there is a hint that she not only beached it, but established a new green dragon fight there, and has been living there for thousands of years. This heavily connects with the fact that the final major patch of Dragonflight 10.2 is a green Dragonflight patch, so this is probably just going to be a bridge to the next expansion. Then we got two banger books further antagonizing the Titans, also adding even more context to this. I'll try to summarize it as quick as possible. One is called The Nature of the Dream, the other The Legend of Eluna here. Long story short, Elune and Eonar seem to be lovers. There is a connection between Elune, the live Titan, and Eonar, the actual Order Titan. Eonar planted the very first World Tree on Azeroth, naming it Eluna here, then Amantul, the lead titan guy, hated it because it had nothing to do with the Order agenda and just ripped it out completely. Remember the name Eluna here because we know later Elune had probably saved Eonar's soul on the planet of Elunaria, as you may remember from Legion. This kind of confirms that Elune will be one of the major connectors in 11.0. Then we learned about the Emerald Dream, that it isn't exactly the blueprint of Azeroth, Eluna here's roots remain and are probably connected to this, and the titans are trying to control the dream to their purpose. The reason I'm really diving into this is because because the final Dragonflight patch is about the Emerald Dream, and that will probably also be the bridge into the next expansion. Furthermore, we had data mine the actual ending of Dragonflight itself, Vironaut becomes a new aspect, the Mirror Seal is saved, Night Elves get a new city, and most importantly, all aspects are blessed by the World Tree itself, becoming essentially the aspects of the Life Force, the aspects of Azeroth, and this is like their final turn against the Titans. This further plays on the hint we got in 10.1.5. Five from Ereticon that he is baiting the titans into coming to Azeroth and the titan presence is very heavily hinted for 11.0. However, now we got the most interesting parts. You definitely have heard of Avaloran, I'm not really going to dig into that. You have also probably heard of the preservational report Earthen by now as well. Earthen got sent by the titan keepers to Aphesir, essentially rebelled and became divorced eventually and their fate was unknown. Well, these surviving roots of Luna here say about unknown guardians coming to protect the remnants of this ancient world tree, so it is 100% possible that Eluna here could be this new zone where we are probably going to go to. These new dwarves named this place Kazalgar, and that leads us essentially into the biggest bit of evidence for the next expansion. So this isn't a fake leak, someone actually played around with the WoW's official build, discovered the so-called Algarian Stormrider, which seems to be a reward for the heroic edition of the new expansion. Expansion. Keep in mind, the name Algarian, Kazalgar, 100% connection, like there is no speculation to it. The Storm Rider almost certainly is a Griffin Rider, and we have a ton more proof of Griffin Riders being a key part of the new expansion. So, a brand new Griffin action was data mined, and apparently, Dynamic Flight was enabled for a whole bunch of Griffin models as well around the same time. Now, in the same document where we learned about the Algarian Storm Rider, we had also discovered Storm Rider Bronze, Silver, and Gold, which is very similar to Dragon Riding Bone. Bonuses. This seems like a heavy hint that we might get upgraded dragon riding called storm riding in the next expansion, and it will probably be a major feature of 11.0. This further adds into the entire storyline of how the green dragons manage to tame the storm to fly through the storm. Additionally, we had data mined the storm rider stone hammers, a new cosmetic. It says that these weapons are renowned across Azeroth for mastering the power of the storm itself. I really don't think I need to expand further on this, as you already have heard all this storm stuff. To further the dwarven stuff, we got a whole bunch of dwarf related assets in the trading post that was very recently added. We had discovered the dwarven crown splitter, we had discovered the wild hammer scout and griffin rider headgear, which further plays into the previous hints, and in the past, we had also gotten updates to the dwarven guards, dwarven siege engine, we had hints of dwarves reconnecting with their frost dwarf cousins in Northland. Now, 
This naturally got everyone to talk about how this is now the Dwarven expansion. 11.0 is a Dwarven expansion, and I really don't think that is the case whatsoever. I think we can discover the major plot point, but it's just like how BFE wasn't a troll expansion or a Kul'Turan expansion, despite having them as a really important part, I also don't think this is going to be the case either. At the same time, we could gotten a ton of void hints everywhere for 11.0 as well. We could discover updates to the zone known as Shadow of Azeroth, which is related to Quelta Las and the Void Elf area that still has a void dome over it. At the same time, we had a void Naru that was data mined that still hasn't appeared. Additionally, we had the ethereal orbs observing us, gathering info, and then Blizzard telling us to keep an eye out for this as it will be an important plot point in the future. As you may know, ethereals got defeated by the void lords. They are like the number one people that have the knowledge on how to combat the void. So if we get invaded by the void, like we would know who to get in touch with. Most importantly, we got a ton of hints about Zelatan not only did she appear in that portal, but in 10.1.7, we had NPCs talking about a void entity hiding inside of a blade, and she seems to be behind Iridicron's plan. In the new book, we also discovered that Iridicron has a sister and a whole bunch of other things that will make him a major character, probably in 11.0. We also had Nazoth watching us from a different timeline and a whole bunch of old god hints. Now, Blizzard did say that 11.0 isn't going to be an old god expansion, it will be about multiple things, but it doesn't really denied their involvement. BFA was technically an old god expansion, but it was mainly about the Horde and the Alliance War, and ultimately Sylvanas' plan with the Jailer. However, I mean, at the grass, we had recently discovered a whole bunch of new cosmetics as well. We got this Tenerist Waste Wonder set, and a whole bunch of these Scarab Mounts and Shields that seems to hint at some sort of a desert and something happening under the ground. Then we had one of the WoW creators that might be closer to Blizzard, hinting that something with bugs and underground will be happening, but also Ultimately, he actually deleted his post, which hinted that he could have potentially had actual legit insider information. All of this played upon Underground being a major part of the new expansion, which kind of made sense why Blizzard was so keen to experiment with Zedala Caverns in Dragonflight. Then we had discovered the motorbikes, which is kind of iconic to Chris Metzen that has now returned to the WoW team, as well as Witch Doctor Cosmetics that could signal trolls being relevant in the new expansion as well. Additionally, we also had pretty much a confirmation from Blizzard that a world revamp will be happening possibly as early as the next year. They're very heavily considering it, which strongly aligns with the fact that they had updated like hundreds of models over the last few years, making a revamp of Azeroth also very possible in 11.0. Now, by this point, that is essentially every single bit of information that we have. The actual announcement will happen in a week, so we will see how these predictions actually turn out. But at least with this video, now you're 100% up to date and ready for BlizzCon. Don't forget to check out Gadget Discovery Club with my link in the description below. Thank you for watching, check out this Vorkred 4 actually happening as we got a new interview from the CEO by clicking on the screen and also check out my video on Ancient Greeks in Spain by also clicking on the screen as well. See you next time!